Hello one and all, this is Luckless Lovelocks. Welcome back to 999. Let's see what Seven wants us to take a look at. What is it? Seven led Junpei back to the bathroom. Clover. As Clover's corpse came into view, he felt his heart flip and then fall to the bottom of his stomach. <sighs> Something between a sigh and a groan escaped his lips. What was it you wanted to show me? His voice was hollow and empty. I searched Clover's body again. A real shame. She was stabbed once in the back, probably by a knife or something. And I found this. As he spoke, he moved around Clover's head. It's gonna be it's gonna be the zero um wristband, I imagine. Then knelt down and flipped open her right hand. What? Oh, no, it's a note. What? She was holding a piece of paper. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff. Well, I did borrow one thing. What? He wasn't sure what that meant, but it likely didn't matter. The paper was more important. Oh, man. I'm opening it. He picked it up and carefully opened it. There were two sentences written on it. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Ah, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. What the hell does that mean? What is this? Some kind of secret code? The darkness of the sinister hand. Seven peered over Junpei's shoulder at the note. Junpei stepped away from Clover's body. Into the living room. Must be a hint towards something in the room. He began to pace, attempting to decode the note. Hmm. A code. First clue was likely the phrase, Sinister Hand. Sinister Hand means... Oh god. Left hand? Sinister was a term used in heraldry that meant to the left of the bearer of a coat of arms. I know, like, being left-handed was considered, like, evil back in... Back in, like, the medieval ages, I believe. The left hand... Hmm. The left hand. What does the left hand mean? Junpei looked at his own left arm. At the bracelet on his wrist. Does the darkness of the sinister hand have something to do with the bracelet? He examined the bracelet closely. There's two things sticking out on either side of the face. The left and right sides of the face. Left and right. Left and right. Right and left. Truth is gone. Truth gone. Hmm. Way to take off the bracelet, maybe? Truth. Gone. Maybe those two words. How about reading it out loud? How about switching the sentence around? What else could gone and truth mean? Reading it backwards. If that does anything. What else could gone and truth mean? Truth, of course, means something that is correct. Something that's fact. In other words, something that is right. You could then safely assume that gone means left. After all, after someone left, they were gone. Truth means correct, so right. Okay. So right, then left. But in this case, they clearly refer to their directional homonyms. Then truth equals right, and gone equals left. Junpei looked at the bracelet again. The left and right of the bracelet. These two things sticking out. So if I... 
Press them in the following order. Oh God. Are you serious? I guess, I'm, I guess right, left, right, left, right, left. And then... One after another, eight numbers flashed on them. On, then off, of the face of Junpei's bracelet. Wait, did it just... Checked one more time to be sure. Shit. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Yeah, I gotta write this down. Just in case. Oh, this is crazy. Uh one, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One four three eight three four two one. Is that have to do with the safe, or is that something to do with the doors? I don't know. Huh? Hey, what are those numbers? Hmm. Junpei didn't answer. He couldn't answer. He had no idea what they were either. Besides, he was sure he would forget the numbers and the order they came in if he said anything. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Muttering the numbers to himself over and over, Junpei headed toward the bedroom. One four three eight three four two one. 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 Before long, he found himself in front of the safe again. Its lock was the only device he could think of that required a sequence of numbers, such as the ones he'd just discovered. Besides, someone had opened the safe at least once already. Had Clover come to the bedroom to open it? Huh. Where did that note come from? Junpei slowly dialed in the numbers the bracelet had given him. One to the right. Four to the left. And oh. finished. Yes. Bingo. I knew it was for this. A small telltale sound of a lock opening. He grabbed the handle, took a deep breath, and pulled it up. Oh, is this some sort of note? It's in Japanese, so we can't, we clearly can't read it. Inside was a piece of paper. It was a, it was roughly the same size as the one Clover had been holding. Let's see. Junpei picked it up. Oh, this is so exciting. This is what it said. Fact number one. The Nonari game was played once before, nine years ago. Fact number two. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. I think we already knew that. Fact number three. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO, Jintaru Hongu. Cradle Pharmaceuticals Chief of Staff, Nagisa Nagisaki? Nijisaki? Sorry, I'm, I know I'm gonna mispronounce these. I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce Japanese names. Cradle Pharmaceuticals R&D Supervisor, Teruaki Kubota. Majority Shareholder in Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Ko, Kagechika uh, Musashidu. I must, punish them for the innocent lives they sacrifice this is the only warning they will receive 
that innocent souls might be saved. I now state the truth. Zero. Junpei left the closet. Huh. There were five people waiting for him in the bedroom. Ace, Lotus, Santa, Seven, and June. He looked at each of them in turn, then slowly placed his hands in the pockets of his vest. Sorry, but do you think you could all come with me? Come with you? I want all of you to go to the big hospital room. Why? There's something I want to be sure of. What do you want to be sure of? I want to know if the person I suspect is really the culprit. Holy shit! Wait, then you're saying... Yeah, I think I've got it figured out. I know who killed Snake and Clover. The atmosphere in the room changed. Grief was suddenly gone, replaced by a tension like a strap of leather stretched to its limit. Five sets of eyes stared at Junpei. He pretended not to notice. Anyway, if you could all please move to the big hospital room. I'll explain everything as soon as we get there. Then, almost as if on cue, the bell began to ring. They all heard it. Did we run out of time? It was the bell from the clock in the main staircase. The bell rang five times, then ceased. It's five o'clock. We've only got an hour left. Oh man, if they did that to me, if they just like, ran out of time, the boat blows up or something. Oh, that would have been, I would have been so pissed off, I think. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go. Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out of the bedroom. Actually, uh, before we get started, I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stepped, or stopped in front of door three and turned around. Ace, Seven, and Lotus, could you please place your palms on the red? Hmm? Huh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just... No, we're not going inside. Once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Why? Please, just do it. Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover. What? Are we gonna... Just push the person in who did it? Junpei's implication was clear and Seven understood perfectly. <sighs> Fine. What about you, Ace? Lotus? Very well. Sure. Is it June? Oh man. Maybe it was June. That could be what the six knocks meant. Quickly they pressed their palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shown from the red's display panel. I have this idea. I don't think this device responds to a hand placed on it. It instead reacts to a bracelet being brought close. Right. You don't actually need a hand. Yeah. Junpei approached it and held his bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it and instead only brought his bracelet near it. The fourth asterisk appeared. I knew it. Just as Junpei had expected. It was possible to authenticate without placing one's palm on the red. So as long as the bracelet was brought near it. I, yeah, okay. So we're, he's explaining the idea of picking up the bracelet and using it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine long seconds passed.
and the door shut, unfed. Junpei walked slowly back to the others, who were waiting some distance from the door, talking to one another. Santa and June had joined them as well. <laughs> huh? It looked as though they hadn't found a chance to break into the conversation yet. As Junpei approached, they turned to look at him, curiosity plain on their faces. If we're going to decide between the two of them, like, I think Santa is excluded because of the way he reacted in the first ending that we got. Before long, the other three did as well. What was that about? How should I know? I mean, if it's Cradle Pharmaceuticals, though, like, oh, God. Oh, my head. Clearly, they were all expecting some answers. Thanks. I appreciate your cooperation. Clearly, they'd hope for something more forthcoming. He continued. Oh, <laughs> they're really, they're really stretching this out. By the way, Ace, would you mind if I asked you something? What is it? Do you know who I am? What? What kind of question? Just answer it, please. Who am I? You're Junpei, of course. Who else would you be? Unfortunately, that's the wrong answer. Actually, I'm Santa. What? Wh what? What? The fuck? What? Ace's voice was full of surprise, but it was also tinged with confusion and fear. Everyone else looked nearly as surprised. So like a personality swapping thing? I don't know. Santa looked especially shocked to discover he was actually someone else. If he spoke, however, the trap would be exposed. Junpei quickly continued. The clothes I'm wearing, I borrowed from Junpei. And the clothes he's wearing are mine. We had a little swap. Wait, what? That's ridiculous. Impossible. So, you're saying I'm not Santa? Of course you aren't. Why? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. One plus seven plus eight plus three equals 19. One plus nine would be 10. The digital route would be one. But the four of us just opened door three. You can't possibly be Santa. Your bracelet number isn't three. It's five, right? Huh? <sighs> Only then, when it was too late, did Ace realize his mistake. He set his jaw and glared at Junpei. You're exactly right. My bracelet number is five. As he spoke, Junpei lifted his wrist up to show everyone the bright red five on his wrist. Blue? Sorry, Ace. I tricked you. Of course I'm not really Santa. I'm Junpei. Who could possibly think I was? <laughs> it's obvious I'm not. To, to think I was? Ridiculous. But I guess you couldn't see just how obvious it was. Oh, because of the faces. <sighs> I asked you before, didn't I? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? And you answered. If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. Most people wouldn't say something like that. The first thing that would come to anyone else's mind wouldn't be the bracelet number. Okay, okay. I'm like, I was so confused. So they're bringing back the, uh, the not being able to recognize faces thing. There'd only be one thing they'd say. One sentence. You don't have his face. <sighs> Ace, you have prosopagnosia. Am I right? 
Junpei's voice was quiet and calm. He knew the truth. So did Ace. Prosopagnosia. The others looked confused. What's that? No clue. Prosopagnosia is... He heard Lotus begin to explain it to them. Ace glanced at them, then turned back toward Junpei and sighed. Very well, I confess. I have prosopagnosia. I cannot differentiate human faces. Is that what this was about? You want to mock me for my disorder? No, no, not at all. I'm not making fun of you at all. In fact, I feel kind of bad for you. No, the reason I brought this up is that there's an excellent chance the person who killed Snake has prosopagnosia. Ace's face tightened, his eyes narrowed. What do you mean? Junpei leaned casually against the iron piping of one of the beds. I'll just come right out with it. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. Okay, now I'm really curious. Junpei was suddenly very aware of five pairs of eyes on him. He had their undivided attention now. The room had grown very, very quiet. Junpei took a deep breath. That's ridiculous. What possible evidence do you... I have three pieces of evidence. The first. Think back to a few hours ago. You made us argue over the three doors here in the big hospital room. There was no way all seven people could go through them. Lotus suggested that we sacrifice one of us. Lotus looked away awkwardly. Junpei glanced at her and continued. Then you, Ace, said, I'll stay here. Why would you say something like that? It's pretty simple, really. You didn't want us to see the dead body in the shower room. <sighs> okay, yeah. You see, if Ace stayed behind, there were only two doors the rest of us could go through. Door seven and eight. There was no way we could get through door three, the shower room. You knew that, didn't you, Ace? That's why you volunteered to stay behind. Come on now, I think that's going a bit far. I can understand if you're jealous of my bravery, but please don't devalue my actions. I only wanted to save the rest of you. Surely you can understand my altruism. Okay, well now, like the way that he's talking. <laughs> altruism, huh. He sounds pretty guilty. Junpei stared off into the darkness at something very interesting and lazily began to dig a persistent bit of wax out of his ear. You already knew, didn't you? You knew that whichever doors we took, eventually we'd end up back in the big hospital room. What on earth are you saying? Of course I didn't know that. How could I have? Really? Yes, yes! Pleading was not something they'd heard from Ace before. <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. Junpei pulled the piece of wax from his ear, glanced at it, and flicked it off into the darkness. Oh well, that's cool. I've still got two more pieces of evidence that say you're the killer. The second is that, as I said earlier, you have prosopagnosia. Then you mean to imply that a person who can't distinguish human faces must be a bad person? Junpei, they call that prejudice. No, I am not that stupid. Then why? Well, before I explain, I suppose there's something I should tell you. The corpse in the shower room. It's not snakes. Wh what? Ace's face went pale. The others looked confused as well. If the body wasn't snakes... I didn't put it together right away, but there was something Clover told me. She said that Snake's left arm was prosthetic. He'd lost his real arm in an accident. But the body we saw in the shower room, let's call him Guy X. Guy X's left arm was definitely flesh and blood. In other words, 
Guy X couldn't possibly have been Snake. Oh god. No. That's impossible. Ace had started muttering deliriously to himself, shaking his head back and forth. Who is... is that Zero, then? Junpei was long past caring. Let's say, hypothetically, that the killer didn't have prosopagnosia. If that were the case, he would immediately realize that Guy X wasn't Snake. Okay. Even if the clothes were the same as Snake's, their faces would be completely different. It would have been obvious they were different people. I still don't think that proves that he did it. And yet, they still killed him. Why? Why would they kill a stranger who'd only just shown up? Because <sighs> he's wearing the bracelet. On the other hand, if the killer did have prosopagnosia, it makes sense. They thought Guy X was Snake and killed him. Wait. Wait just a moment. Let's say you're right, and I mistook Guy X for Snake. Even if I did, I would have had no motive to kill him. Why would I want to kill Snake? I can think of at least two motives. One, Snake knew about your past. Okay, yeah. If he ever revealed what he knew, that would have been really bad for you. You really didn't want that to happen. So the other question is, how would he get the door open and the way that he could get the door open is with the nine bracelet so that must be the last piece of evidence right his ace snake or bracelet two and nine that would be um 12 one plus two is three that is the most compelling piece of evidence so if he has the nine bracelet on him that that really that Kind of proves it in my mind. So to make sure Snake's mouth stayed shut, you killed him. <sighs> Two. Snake had a grudge against you. You knew that, or at least you could have easily assumed he did. Even without exposing your identity, he was a threat to you. Right, because we know that he was in one of the previous games, and we know that he was that, that um, Ace was the uh, the president of the pharmaceutical company. You never knew when you might be attacked. You couldn't ever let your guard down. Every moment was a moment he might try something. You didn't want that kind of danger hanging over you. So you... Hey, hold on a minute. For the first time since the beginning of Junpei's explanation, someone besides Ace spoke. What's the past that Ace wouldn't want us to know? Why did Snake have a grudge against him? Look at this. He handed Santa a small piece of paper. What's this piece of paper? Santa squinted at the paper and began to read. The nonary game was played once before nine years ago. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO Gentaro Hongo. So that's Ace. Um, I thought they said it was he was the president, not the CEO. It's a bit different, isn't it? What is this? Slowly, Santa looked up from the paper. His eyes met Junpei's. It's the message from Zero. It was in the safe in the first class cabin. Then suddenly. Give me a break! Ace's face was red and shaking, and his voice was full of fury, tinged with desperation. That paper is a lie! Someone is trying to frame me! Me. You said me, right? Junpei's eyes narrowed, and the trap began to close. <gasps> Ace inhaled sharply, his eyes flicked off of Junpei to something, anything else. Wouldn't that mean... You're admitting you're Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Or am I mistaken? It was as though a switch had been flipped. The color drained from Ace's face as he realized what he'd done. His eyes went wide. Very well. I admit that much. I am certainly the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical, Gentaro Hongo. So what if I am? I don't know anything about this nonary game that supposedly took place nine years ago. Everything on that scrap of paper is bullshit. 
Someone is trying to set me up, you see? First of all, first of all. Ace stammered as he tried desperately to work himself to a more tenable position. Junpei, you're claiming I did this all by myself. Think that over, all right? How could I have killed Snake all by myself? Not Snake. It was Guy X. Who is this guy? I don't care who it was. You said the killer put this other man into door three, right? Yeah, maybe. Then I couldn't have possibly done that alone. I couldn't have opened door three with only myself and Guy X. Nope, you could have. <gasps> huh? Huh? What? What? Huh? Ace's face was tight and his teeth were clenched. Junpei fixed him with a level stare. The trap was about to close. Actually, Ace, when you were unconscious, I took something from you. <laughs> Remember when you were injected with that anesthetic and fell asleep in the big hospital room? Yeah, back then, I took this. Junpei put his hand into his pocket. No! You couldn't have! Ace's right hand moved. Junpei smiled. I got you, Ace. Your right hand there tells me all I needed to know. You want to tell me what you were so worried about? What's in your pocket? <clears throat> it's the number nine bracelet, isn't it? <clears throat> Ace, Guy X, and the ninth man's bracelet. That was all you needed to open door three. 1 plus 2 plus 9 equals 12. 1 plus 2 equals 3. That's how you killed Guy X all by yourself, Ace. All you needed was the number 9 bracelet in your chest pocket. Ace lowered his hand from where it had stopped. Halfway to his pocket. <sighs> he looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead, tell me. I don't have the bracelet, if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force. Right, Seven? Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> Evil laugh! Ace roared with laughter. He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed, filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there. <laughs> then it stopped. <laughs> his arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei. His face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Well done, Junpei. As you so correctly deduced, I have the number nine bracelet. I retrieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware for the red. I left the room I was supposed to search and headed to the first class cabin on B deck. His voice showed no emotion. No sense of remorse or interest. It was almost bored, as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number nine bracelet. Nine is a potent ally in the nonary game. Adding nine to any set of numbers won't alter the digital root. One plus nine equals 10. One plus zero equals one. Gotcha. As you can see, nine is a very useful number here. With it, one can go anywhere with anyone. It is, I suppose you could say, a game changer. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it. Clover probably had the zero. Does that mean that 
that Ace also killed her to get that. In mere moments. Still couldn't get out on his own with those, though. But he could with Lotus. He could make a deal with Lotus. I successfully acquired the number nine bracelet. There was also an unexpected bonus. The knife the ninth man had used. Oh! I should have remembered! I quickly pocketed both of them and left. I made my way back to where I was expected to be. That's when I ran into Snake. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, so if he has one snakes, that would be three. And then if he got clovers, it's still not nine. Well, this guy X, actually. I spotted him ahead of me. He was heading for the large hospital room and hadn't noticed me. The man wearing Snake's clothes arrived at door three. When he stopped, I walked up behind him and called out. Snake. He turned around. Who is this guy? He said nothing. Is that zero? His mouth simply hung half open. He seemed dazed somehow, almost like a man half asleep. Perhaps he had been drugged. It wasn't important. I tend to gloss over little things like that. I was certain that man was Snake. I knew Snake had taken part in the Nonary game nine years ago. Being blind, it made sense that he didn't recognize me immediately upon our first right. meeting. Right. But why then hadn't Snake said anything to me later? Surely he hadn't forgotten what had happened to him in the Nonary game. But not once did he attempt to confront me. Did his lack of sight prevent him from fully recognizing who I was? Or perhaps Snake had conspired with Zero to deceive me? Regardless, he was a threat, and it was better to deal with him sooner rather than later. I had to get rid of him before he took action. With quick thinking, my plan went into motion immediately. I held the number nine bracelet over the red. I waved my own bracelet in front of the red and then grabbed Snake's arm and shoved his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. I threw the man through it. <laughs> Nine seconds later, the door shut. Eighty-one seconds passed. The man inside the door passed away. After that, I returned to my post as though nothing had happened. After conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room when the 1 a.m. bell rang. Ace's eyes were cold, and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. When he spoke, only his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. <sighs> Junpei glared at Ace, took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask. He didn't want to, he knew what the answer would be. He just didn't want to hear it. Junpei swallowed, then spoke. Ace, did you kill Clover? Yes. Why? Why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It was possible he had told her something dangerous. Okay, okay. Additionally, she had gone through door one. It seemed likely she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door one yourself? Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Is, door, is that the submarine door? Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door one, too. We didn't see anything suspicious. 
Yes. I thought as much after I heard your report at the central stairs. Or that's the, they're talking about the zero bracelet. I doubt the two of you could find it. Mm hmm? Okay. Huh? But perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was, therefore, desperate to find her. And at last I did, in the first class cabin. I spoke very calmly. Did you, Did you see, see it? it? See what? Don't act yeah. as if you don't understand. You were in the captain's quarters, weren't you? Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. What are you, what are you talking, talking about? So did he also kill the Zero, I guess? Or the, whoever that was? Hmm. Very well. Because I think he was stabbed. Uh, By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? What? Uh, nothing. There's blood on your shoes. It looks fresh. Did you go take a look at the ninth man's corpse? I see. Your silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? You saw that his bracelet was gone. Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her to the floor, hard. You're staying here. No! She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed at a run. <laughs> Don't, Don't you, you run, run, little girl. He was faster. That was how I killed Clover. His face hadn't changed. If you felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it didn't show. You son of a bitch! Seven's whole body trembled with rage, and his voice rumbled with hate. <laughs> <gasps> Santa's eyes were bloodthirsty, and Lotus and June's faces were distorted by anger and hatred. <laughs> Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing, with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it. I've lost. I have lost. Completely and utterly. Don't misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. I lost to Zero. Not you. <sighs> I'm rather disgusted with myself for falling into such a simple trap. I look the fool. And it was a trap, make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by Zero. The man I killed in the shower room? If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes, and that was no coincidence. He had also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. So Zero just threw some other stranger, drugged up stranger in here, dressed like Snake? And we can't forget the components that were removed from the red before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all of this. Zero made sure I would kill that man. <sighs> it follows, of course, that Zero knew everything I would do. That I would try to take the number nine bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. <sighs> Suddenly, Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. He remembered the last words Zero had written on it. I must punish them. For the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved. I now state the truth. 
Zero. And he remembered other words, words he'd heard from Clover. I think Zero is one of us. One by one, Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. Ace. Santa. June. Seven. Lotus. Zero is one of us. No, wait. There's one more person. Snake. The man who died in the shower room is in Snake. That means he's almost certainly still alive. The snake is zero. Maybe snake is zero. Maybe he made Guy X wear his clothes so that we'd all think he was dead. Hmm. Where's snake now? What if he's off somewhere laughing at us? If he is zero, he must have been lying to us about everything else. Is he watching us? Well, I believe I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? He sounded as if he'd just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? Oh, man. All right, this episode is running long, so I'm going to have to end it here, guys. I, I, thought, I thought this would be the end, but... Wow. This is craziness. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. This is Luck is Love Luck signing off for now. And I love you all.